Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1, verse 13 to 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 13 to 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 13 to 17. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 13 to 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 13 to 17. Thank you, Lord. Hello. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often plan to come to you, but I was hindered until now, that I might have fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. Verse 14. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Verse 15. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. Verse 17. For in, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written. The judge shall live by faith today i'm going to be sharing with you you are not a shame mighty god of heaven this morning no man obtains anything from you except is given directly by you through your willingness father we are ready this morning to get us again refreshed out of the uncommon food that you normally prepare for those you have ordained from the beginning of the world. Come out today in a very heavy, powerful anointing of yours. And let everyone who stand here before you receive the overwhelming presence of God, breaking yoke, destroying shackles of darkness, releasing the captives, setting them into liberty. Thank you, Father, this morning. Because the sound of your voice will break yoke this morning. In Jesus' name, we've all declared. Amen. Hallelujah. You are Amen. not ashamed. Come on, say that with me. You are not ashamed. All right. Now, what we are talking about here is that it has often been this talk of the town, the sin of the entire environment, the sin of the world, that Christians are just waste of time they are people who go around who are out of their mind who doesn't have go for life who are carrying the spirit of religion because of the fear of a god that, that they do not know someone said about us that our presence in the community is a constitution of intolerance but this message is coming today to give you the right direction that the lord has carefully defined what christians are hallelujah and then we are told that christians are the one being sent by god and they are sent to create church on earth so that the will of God can be done in heaven, I mean on earth, as it is in heaven. And uh, Christians are the people that call of God, gave their life to Christ, and called to preach the gospel. In other words, and Christians are careers of the gospel. Christians are careers of God's virtue, and therefore, it is very important for the whole world to know, for you as a Christian to know, for the unbeliever you've been preaching to over time and time, not listening, to know this clear message of what Jesus is having on 
who Christian is. Hallelujah. So Christian is not a shame in the town. Christian is not a shame in the street. Christian is not a shame in the community. A Christian is a preacher of the gospel. And because of the gospel they preach, therefore shame has no place in them. Now let me define the word shame. What is the meaning of shame? Shame is a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. It is a regrettable, unfortunate situation or action. It is an action or situation that brings a loss of respect or honor. When you have a shame, you, you are put under pressure of blaming yourself to the end that you feel like disappearing from sight. So shame is what called a regret and I've been uh, having an apology of what you have done. But I'm telling you today, a Christian, a world believer, the one who gives himself to Christ, who is a preacher of the gospel, they are not ashamed. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And now you're going to ask me, why am I saying this? We can see from the definition of what shame is, I'm going to be crafting this, this particular point out from the scripture. So, so to go straight to the point, without wasting time hallelujah i'm sorry i'm i'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a trained engineer uh that's my undergraduate degree and as well as graduate degree so i rather say uh in, in 20 words what i want to say in 100 words so you don't expect me to over elaborate things and uh i'm lost in words so i like to make sure i make things uh as much as it is easy for me to be able to convey in a simple mathematical manner. So you have to bear with me today. I'm a kind of person who wants to go straight to the point. What is the point having to waste time on speaking many words? Well, you can actually speak, <laughs> speak things in few words. Hallelujah. What, why are you not ashamed? Number one. You add beauty to your community as you preach the gospel of good news. Right? The true meaning of gospel is a good news. And we have been told in the scripture, if you look at the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 15, we are told about the feet of those who preach the gospel. Alright? Let's look at it. Right? Romans chapter 10 verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good news. So, another way around, when you are a Christian and you are preaching the gospel, the implication is that your presence in the community adds values to the community. Your presence in the community has beauty to the community. The Bible said you are the light of the world. The city set upon the hill cannot be hidden. So the world is running because of the gospel that is being preached to the world. And the many, many nations of the world are surviving today because of their accommodation of what we call the gospel through the mouth of the preacher. So the preacher of the gospel, who is called a Christian, is not a negative in the community. It is actually an addition of beauty to the community. So, it is very important for us as Christians as we stand here this morning to understand that we are not an horde one out in the community. And then the knowledge of who you are is capable of giving you awareness and taking you to where you are going. So, if we are ignorant of the gospel we preach, and we make it to be as that you are begging people to believe in us, they will be doing the wrong thing. So the Christ Himself has declared that gospel is the value that the community needs. The gospel is the salvation that the community needs. So you are the salvation proclaimer. You are the giver of beauty to the community. So a one who is a Christian preaching the gospel. Now listen to me carefully. It's not just a Christian. A Christian has been called to preach the gospel. Everybody say, preach the gospel. 
So when you are not preaching the gospel, it just means that you are not a Christian. In Antioch, the disciples were first called Christian. Why do they call them Christian? Because they were very vast in the teaching and the doctrine of Christ. They were very vast. They were very passionate about reaching forth to people to, about, the, about Christ. They were filled with God's teachings. They were filled with, the, with, with, the, with, with going out to reach unto men. So, the reason why they call them Christian, they saw the attitude of God, the attitude of Christ when it was something of the earth, going around to preach, to minister, to teach. They saw it also in them. That is why they call them Christian. And so, therefore, when you are a Christian, you are a gospel preacher. And if you are here today and you still not going out, reaching forth to people, whatever means you can go through social media, whatever connection, you are making God to be sad. Hallelujah. You don't want to make God to be sad. You don't want to be a negative to the community. God is not seeing us as values when we fail to preach the gospel. So the gospel is a career of beauty. It's a career of benefit. It's a career of light to the community. So a, a, a gospel preacher, a Christian who preaches the gospel, it's not a shame, but it's a value unto the community. Number two, why are you not a shame? Why are you not a shame? Because you preach the gospel that profess all round salvation to men. E.g., what is the meaning of all round salvation? E.g., salvation from death, salvation from lack, salvation from poverty, salvation from distresses. Salvation from dishonor. Salvation from self-defeat. Salvation from humiliation. And on, and on, and on. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first, and also for the Greek. Look at that word here. I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it's the power of God. Everybody say power of God. Power of God. Unto salvation. A power of God unto salvation. Power of God unto salvation. The gospel is a proclaimer of power of God. When power of God is present. When a preacher preaches the gospel. The power of God is released. What does this power of God? Number one. A break yokes hallelujah it breaks yokes it destroys shackles right it liberates sickness people away from sickness and chains of darkness what does he do the gospel profile solution to our problems the gospel saves, or the ultimate of it all it saves people from eternal death hallelujah the gospel is also a conqueror of poverty you've been asking me why is he saying this and I can confirm that for, with you in the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 29 to 30. Mark chapter 10, verse 29 to 30. Mark chapter 10, verse 29 to 30. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children or land for my sake and the gospel sake hallelujah everybody say gospel sake gospel. now what did he say that's going to happen the salvation that's proclaimed here hallelujah yes. verse 30 said but he shall receive hundredfold now in this time it was it now in this time now it's not in heaven so a gospel preacher a christian is not a shame it's not a sorrow to the community. They are abundance. They are people who bring investment to the community. And what are we told here? We are told that Christ said, hundredfold shall be given them a return. That means the gospel offers, the career of the gospel offers salvation to deliver from poverty. Hallelujah. Now, they didn't stop. They said, houses. 
Amen. They will be given houses and brethren. Hallelujah. Say, so human beings are difficult to win. Hallelujah. If you want to have people connected to you as friends, the gospel is the key. So we are not actually beggars. Christians are not actually beggars. They are influencers in the community. They are the one causing stability and peace in the environment by the kind of connection they have. So if you are sitting down there and getting sad every day by yourself as a Christian, then there's a need for you to reconnect with this message today. Because you are the community causer. You are supposed to be a community organizer. The community organizing should not be left to the other side. The community organizing bringing men of values in the community comes from you because you preach the gospel. Hallelujah. He said, houses will come. Brethren, sisters, mothers, children, and land. That means you create children all over the place. But when they, what a rich man cannot even have with his money. You begin to have it. Hallelujah. You begin to have children in faith all over the community. People who can replicate the value of God will begin to spread the surface of the earth. Your life is sustained in care of God till you die. It means you have not only have your own wife, your own husband, or your own children, you also have children beyond your own house. So the gospel is actually a winners of community hallelujah so when you are a christian you're not ashamed you are actually a value had other you are not to be looking around and jumping around and looking for people to help you out to to establish you but god is saying that he will establish you but the problem we have today as christians is that we have failed to preach the gospel and so therefore the benefit of the gospel is not following us the benefit of the gospel is not knocking at our door because we are filled in actually preaching Christ to the people in the world. It's now in our holiday, it's a persecutions. It means that you might have some challenges in life, but the thing is that because you are preaching the gospel, the challenge, the persecution won't be able to overcome you. Hallelujah. And in, in this world and in the world to come. Hallelujah. Say in the world to come and eternal life to eternal life. So when you are a Christian and you are preaching the gospel, this is the benefit. The benefit is not that you're going to become a pauper. You are going to become blessed. Hallelujah. Everybody say blessed. And I've told you before, blessing is not just counting papers. It is more than that. You can see the blessing. See, God will put value to your time. He put give you his own house hallelujah amen. amen he will give you brethren people that become friends people are crying to that say oh i don't have anybody to love me i don't have anybody to appreciate me but what about if you continue to preach the gospel somebody said that we have not had a problem i've been praying to god about marital life somebody i'm going to get married to i don't even see partner coming nobody's asking my hand in marriage somebody said i've been looking for a woman to marry I couldn't find, but a few thought of desperately preaching the gospel like never before. Because God is promising here when you preach the gospel, family will be created for you all over the world. Families, hallelujah, families. That means the gospel has the ability within itself to make room for you to get a future home for yourself, to get married to the right person, to get married. To the right person chosen by God. So the gospel is just the secret. Preaching the gospel is just the secret. We are not ashamed. Only when we begin to preach the gospel to the community. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three. Number three. You are not ashamed. The reason why you are not ashamed is that God Himself is indebted to never being ashamed of you who is the preacher of the gospel are you listening to me god is indebted right that he will never be ashamed of you when you continue to preach the gospel hallelujah what, that, what does that mean that means you are guaranteed god's presence always people cry today say i don't feel god's presence i can't i can't see it i i, I just don't know whether god is with me be, that you are feeling that because you've not been preaching the gospel right 
you are the one causing problem. We are the one causing problem in the community, making people to feel that our presence is just negative in the community. But when we continue to preach the gospel that we are actually afraid of preaching, it is when we begin to occupy our place and occupy the place God has appointed for us to occupy. Hallelujah. And it's when door begins to open. It is when God will begin to stand for us in whatever you are, in the place of work, in the school, God will always stand there. Why? In the book of Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Mark chapter 8, verse 38. It said, if anyone is ashamed of me and my word in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with his holy agent. Now, it's very important to understand this. We can see the case of Stephen. Amen. When Stephen was ministering the gospel with all power, with all might of God, something happened just before he was taken to heaven. Hallelujah. Despite the persecution, God arose from heaven. He opened his heaven and he saw, and he said, I saw heaven. God, God's throne. Hallelujah. So God's presence manifested even in the realm of his persecution. He experienced God's presence. So the same way when a man is filled with preaching the gospel, God will not hesitate in standing by the side of that person. That's something you don't do by prayers. <laughs> you know, some, some God's presence sometimes can be done by simply saying, God, be with me. God, be with me. God will be with you. Because it's said in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 20, verse 18 to 20. Matthew chapter 20, verse 18 to 20. He said, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you. Everybody say that. I am with you. I am with, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So God's presence should not be lacking the life of a Christian who is filled with preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel everywhere. The place of work, in your office, on the street, on the internet. Create a media. Set it up. Begin to reach people. All you say in that media, social media, is Christ. It's about the gospel. The social media is not a just place you just uh, disclose your pictures and see, make people see what is what your home, your life is composed of. It's more than that. I believe God has made this to happen. This social media to happen because the gospel must spread all to the uttermost parts of the world. And so, as a preacher, as a Christian, called to reach unto men, you are not ashamed where you keep engaging the preaching of the gospel. And what happens? God's presence comes automatically. Everybody say automatically. Something automatically. you don't have to cry for. God just show how. He show himself. You know, the gospel is not what you sit down and craft your brain to organize and bring word to say to people. It's simply taking the scripture and simply sharing the word of God with them in the little you know. You don't have to go to theology. You know, when Paul started ministering the gospel, when he gave his life to Christ, when Christ actually met him on the way to Damascus, as soon as that issue of his heart being opened came to pass, he started preaching the gospel. Unstoppable. Hallelujah. He did not have to go to Bible college. He didn't have to go to discipleship training. He just started preaching the gospel. And you can see what he always doing. The introductory part of his message is to share his testimony. He shared the encounter he had with Jesus. Hallelujah. In the way to Damascus. The life pattern that he was living before he was converted. And he will draw that, connect with the scripture, and share with them. Simple message. And you will see people turning to Christ. And no wonder. Apostle Paul went through dangerous events. He went through dangerous activities. What I mean, dangerous activity. It was in a particular city where he was being stoned and being cursed. And at a particular point, he got angry. He said, well, 
your blood shall be upon you. I am gone. I'm out of here. But Jesus appeared to him in a dream. I said, go back. I'm not done. The gospel is not yet done with that city. And it continued in the midst of dangerous community. Hallelujah. And so agree with me in Jerusalem too. We are told that it was going to be stoned. It was going to be tied down. And Paul was confident. He went in there and preached the gospel. God has a way. If it's not yet your time for you to be taken to heaven, if it's not yet your time, God has a way of protecting you and showing forth when you preach the gospel. Gospel preacher, they are not always afraid. They are not always afraid because God's presence is with them. God is indebted in making sure that they are kept in his custody. God is not ashamed of them. God is not what? Ashamed of them. Hallelujah. Amen. Number four. Number four. Why are you not ashamed in the community? Because you are able to see beyond your nose for yourself, for others, stemming from being the career and the preacher of the gospel. The gospel, which is the revelation of Christ. When we are going out and preaching the gospel, you know what comes out of the gospel? We're told it's the revelation of Christ. When Christ is the center of our message, reaching forth to the people, something begins to happen to us. We begin, people begin to receive revelation. Their eyes begin to get opened. And you yourself begin to see brighter things, what you have not been able to see before, begin to come to place. People begin to ask today, say, I want to see more things. To see more things is to preach the gospel the more. When you preach the gospel the more, God will see a reason why he must open your eyes to see the depth of glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. In the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 16 to 17. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. For everyone who believes, for the Jew first, and also the Greek, verse 17. For in it is the righteousness of God, as soon as God is revealed, look at the word, revelation. It's revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the judge shall live by faith. Now, look at uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 21. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 21. And the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give, ye, give to you the spirit of wisdom. Listen carefully. Revelation in the knowledge of him. So, you become a knowledge giver because revelation is inputted in you. Verse 18. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Because revelation is given to you, your eyes begin to open. Hallelujah. When you are preaching the gospel, you are, an, you are a priest to the community. You know the shame. Hallelujah. You begin to see things that people can see. You be able to reveal things to people that give solution to their problem. So, you as a Christian, as you continue to preach the gospel, you are not ashamed to the community. You are a priest to the community. Verse 18, 18b, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saint? Verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? towards those who what believe according to the workings of his mighty power verse 20 which he walked in christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places 21 for above all far above all principalities power might dominion and every name that is named not in the age, but also that which is to come. Mark chapter 8, verse 25. Mark chapter 8, verse 35. Mark 8, 35. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me, for the gospel, will save it. Hallelujah. So the gospel offers God's revelation. To see beyond your nose. Hallelujah. Things are very dark to us today because we have failed in our responsibility in preaching the gospel. We can't see things clearly. We can't see success 
in our academic work. We can't see success in our businesses. We can't see the future getting bright. We can't see ourselves having a great home in the future. We can't see ourselves making success in whatever we lay, upon, lay our hands upon simply because we've not been preaching the gospel. If we've been preaching the gospel, we are told this will be happening to us. Hallelujah. We yes. cannot become somebody who needs to be thrown to the trash in the community. We will be the post people who are championing the community, who are helping the community to grow in values. Hallelujah. Because we are added values to the community. We are revelators. We are the high opener of people. Hallelujah. The many Christians today are seeking towards the unbeliever to help their highs open. But in the other way around, the unbeliever need to be seeking towards your area to have their highs open. But we have exchanged this responsibility because we sat down, sit back on our couch and refuse to preach the gospel. And we're expecting one day will be one day. That's not the way it works. It's not one day, it's one day. Today is the day. Everybody say, today is the day. Today's you the got day. to start now and start preaching the gospel. Now, not tomorrow. Now, not tomorrow. Now, not tomorrow. Fruitfulness is one of the key that God is expecting for every Christian to have. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when we preach the gospel, God is seeing us as being fruitful. Number five. Hallelujah. Number five. Why are you not ashamed? Because you are preaching the gospel, you start to enjoy fruitfulness without stress of asking. Hallelujah. Yes. Everybody say fruitfulness, fruitfulness without the stress of asking God. Without stress of asking God. This may include enjoying answer to unspoken requests. Hallelujah. When you are a gospel preacher, amen. When you are a Christian, indebted to preach the gospel, you no longer be ashamed in the community. What happens to you? You begin to be fruitful. Hallelujah. Fruitfulness becomes your portion. It's not what you have to make me fruitful. Make me fruitful. Some people today are believe that they're not fruitful just because they've rejected preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. John chapter 15, verse 16. John 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me. Listen carefully. But I have chosen you. And ordain you that you should go and bring forth food. What did God say? Christ says, You go and bring forth fruit. Everybody say, Go and bring forth fruit. Go and bring forth fruit. It is an authority given to us. We need to go in our going is in the preaching of the gospel. Whatever method we want to adopt. And in the preaching of the gospel. That is where lies the fruitfulness. It's not just sometimes in prayers. Hallelujah. God help me be fruitful. No. God help me to be bold and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. And I look at that he said next. He said that your fruit should remain. Not just fruitfulness without that permanency. You are fruitful and your fruit is remaining. All right. You are not just a mistake. You're not just having accidental blessing. Amen. You are not just increase accidentally. Your increase will remain. Hallelujah. Only when we be here, what we're supposed to be here. Preaching, preacher of the gospel. That's when the shame of unfruitfulness can be taken away. So whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, let me give it to you. Hallelujah. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? It means when we are bearing our true name. <laughs> Not being ashamed to the communities that we are preaching the gospel, and when we preach the gospel, there are some things that God will ordinarily answer us without even shaking our mouth. Amen. An unspoken request, hallelujah. And it make even if you pray, your prayer answer to your prayer become faster. Amen. Because you are preaching the gospel. The shortcut to getting things from God is to be an unrepentant preacher of the gospel. I want you to have this today and keep it. In the depth of your heart that the only key for you to be driven to success is for you to be an adamant preacher of the gospel somebody who can't be changed from preaching the gospel somebody who is not ashamed of the gospel as apostle paul said somebody who can confront people in the spirit of the authority given 
by God without shame going there to minister to them. Hallelujah. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. He said, I'm the true vine. Listen carefully. And my father is the vine dresser. So every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. And every band that bear fruit, he prunes that he may bear more fruit. Now look at the word, he prunes. Ah. God has a way of making somebody who is serving him to keep being fruitful. He has a way. You know what he does? He come around him and touch him and begin to prune him to bear more fruit. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is the act of God. That doesn't happen if we are not a preacher of the gospel. That doesn't happen if we are not a career of the gospel. There are some pruning in our life. Amen. There are some disturbances in our life. That pruning of God is needed to enable us to move and progress in life. Some people have a shoddy future and have kind of wilderness in their future. And they can't see clearly because the commission that is given to them to preach the gospel has not been delivered. They've not been delivering the gospel. And so their future become darker. They cry, I need you God, take me away from oppression. I need you God to save me from the entanglement of the enemy. I need you to deliver me from the harassment of Satan. And God is saying, have you gone out and preached the gospel and tell people who I am and explain to them that I'm God of all creation and I'm seeking for worshiper who worship me in spirit and truth. Some people today have not been receiving the church of God simply because they are ashamed of the gospel. They are Christians. They have the Holy Ghost. But the thing is that the anointing in them is not increasing because they sit back and just hearing. Amen. And just hearing. But never go out and preach the gospel. I want to, to put God into test this morning. As soon as you leave this service today, let it become your priority to start preaching the gospel with all your power, with all your might, with all your strength. Create a social media. Be confident about this God. He said, whoever is ashamed of me, I've, I've, I've explained this before, it will be ashamed of. So God's presence is declared to you when you are confident about God you are serving. You think people will hate you? They will just uh, put you out of, of the group? No. That is not true. When you are out there, people can figure out who you are and you identify yourself with Christ. God has a way of intervening and be your own advocate in whatever you are, in whatever business you are engaging. He has a way of speaking on your behalf. Hallelujah. He has a way of telling people, you can't touch that one. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. God has a way of making you even famous. Amen. Hallelujah. Even though the reason why we are preaching the gospel is not to be famous. But God has a way. Where we are told that Christ, when he was preaching the gospel, his fame spread abroad. Even the disciples too. Their fame spread abroad. Why? Because gospel is not a shame. Gospel is famous. Hallelujah. Gospel because of the power it delivers. The power of salvation for all kind of issues and problems. That is why it's famous. So when you end the defile with the gospel as a Christian, you are no longer have big encountering shame in your life. Things become to becomes to be, things begin to become naturally resol resolving without you even have to cry and yell. God begin to come on your aid and resolving issue, resolving matters for you. Hallelujah. Amen. You will have challenges. But it doesn't matter. Remember what he said? He said persecution is going to be there. You're going to give them houses, children. You're going to give them give their sister, brother, create a new family. But he said with also persecution. So people are always afraid of that last benefit. They say, oh, how can that be a benefit? Persecutions, I'm going to have surplusity, including persecutions. It's better I do not preach the gospel. But the thing is this. God always hide 
mysteries inside the mocked god always had hide mysteries in persecution no wonder the disciples were told they were rejoicing when they were persecuted because they understand the secret of being persecuted he said blessed are you when you are persecuted so god wants us to rise up to take our place we are not ashamed to the community we are blessings we are value others we are god's enabling enabling power into the environment we are not to be looked down upon you cannot look down up, look down on yourself anymore let today be the last time you will ever think you have no value let today be a last time you ever gone around the place and be looking for love around let today be the last day you're going to be behaving as you need help from people <laughs> let today be the last day you're going to make yourself inferior you got to rise up and be confident and carry the gospel that has been delivered to you to minister to your community. It is then that the community begins to respond to you and your need will be met. So you are not ashamed. You are a hardened value to the community. Rise up on your feet today. You're going to begin to pray. Father, the value you have put into me, let it rise. I have decided to change my direction from now i'll begin to preach the gospel it is time to preach the gospel it is time to spread the good news it is time to speak about christ the savior of the world it is time i accept this responsibility open your mouth and declare Rasataka. open your mouth and declare Music in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak to God. It's time to start taking the banner of the gospel and celebrate God and tell people about Christ. This is the time. There's no other time anymore. This is the only time we have. The time is short. And Christ is coming again. If you want to make it in this world, stop your prayers. Stop your prayers and let God begin to answer your unspoken request. By beginning, by starting to preach the gospel from today. God, give me the enabling power not to be ashamed anymore to go out and preach the gospel. To preach the gospel, whatever I'm located, to minister your, your gospel to everyone, to every life. Speak to God. Speak to God. Speak to God. Speak to God. You are God emblems. You are God power. You are God's anointed. You are God's authority. On the surface of the earth, you've been sent by God to represent Him. So why will you stay like this and cry for many years asking the same thing and say, God, you have not given me this? Why can't you go out and tell about the giver who gives gifts and let the giver who gives gifts continue to? Re continue to respond to your prayers continue to respond to your prayers why do you hinder god from, <laughs> from performing in your life why do you stand in god's way by refusing to preach the gospel open your mouth and say god give me the energy give me the power give me the power give me the power give me the grace give me the grace give me the grace from today i will not be ashamed i will not be ashamed i will not be ashamed to identify myself with you i will raise my commitment to you i will continue to preach the gospel i will speak about your light i will speak your power of salvation i will speak about your victory i will speak about your testimony oh lord god almighty i know that you've been waiting for me for too long this things i've been asking about it's very easy for you to give to me but because i've refused that is why my money has not been settled because i've refused that's why my future has not been settled because i've refused to preach the gospel i rather than preach the gospel i preach about myself too much i talk much about myself my need my want but now it is the time for me to step out and preach the gospel i will preach the gospel i will preach the gospel i will preach the gospel by your power by your anointing i will not give up thank you father in jesus name we have declared mighty god of heaven we thank you today as we speak your word unto your men unto your children we pray the seed of this word will grow in them lord 
the seed of this world will prod your children this morning to start taking up the commission the commission of reaching to the whole world about christ preaching the gospel bearing our true name that we are the hardest values of the community that are beautiful our feet in the community we are and that we are the light of the world the citizen upon the hill cannot be eaten we pray today this shall begin to happen to us we begin to go out grace will be given to preach grace will be given to preach grace strategy vision will be released upon everyone today who are listening thank you father in jesus name we have all declared